Okay, in this video, we're going to start off by looking at another automotive part, which you can see on my bench, and we'll focus on robotic applications in this video. So if you're a student, or anybody who wants to build a robotic project, we're going to look at some options. Now this is a DC motor, and it's out of a Kia, and it's the power window motor that drives the window up and down, and it's from the passenger side. It runs on 12 volts, so there's our 12 volt plug, it has two pins. It has three mounting tabs and they're threaded and they're on the same plane and we have our output shaft and it's an 8 millimeter shaft so we could mount this now on our chassis this way and put the wheel on here and then we could get the driver's side version of this motor which is the mirror image so the shaft will be coming out this side and we can mount it on the right side so now we have to interface this 8 millimeter shaft to a wheel so we could use a standard coupler or a flange coupler which will make it a lot easier or we could use a belt drive, we could put a belt drive sprocket on here and drive it by a belt. Or we could find a wheel with an 8mm bore and just put the wheel on, on the shaft and tighten the set screws and then away we go. Okay, anytime I get a new motor, I want to test it out right away. So I use my DC PWM speed controller, which you can see here. So I hook my motor up to it and I can adjust the speed from zero to maximum speed. And it uses PWM. Then I have my forward, stop, and reverse, and on the back, simple connections, there's my power in, DC plus, DC minus, and this hooks up to my motor, and we could give it a, a try. So I'll hook it up to my motor, and we'll check it out. Okay, I got my motor hooked up, and we'll give it a test. So I'm moving forward. maximum. Now we'll go reverse. That's full speed. And take it down to zero. Okay, next, we have to pick out our motor driver board, and there's many to choose from. And you notice my motor was drawing about 900 milliamps on my power supply. Now that's without a load, so under a load and on startup, it's going to draw more current. So we have to pick a board that can handle the current draw. Now the one on the left is from Adafruit, and on the one on the right, I just got off Amazon. So they're pretty similar, except this one is a low, lower current handling than this one but they're, they're pretty similar in hookup. If you look at the top left, we have a terminal strip, that's for the motor, and the terminal strip on the right, that's for the power, and then we have our control in one, in two, and ground. Similar to this one, if you look at the terminal strip, we have our motor connection, and we've got the power for the motor, and then we have our control in one, in two, and ground. Now to control the PWM and to control the motor, if you look at the chart, normally in one and in two have pull down resistors, so they're pulled down low normally, and that disables the H bridge. So then now we have to apply logic levels to in one and two to control our motor. So if in one is low and in two is high, that's going to cause the motor to go into reverse full speed. But if we pulsate in two with PWM, we could actually control the speed in reverse. Now the next state is in one is high, in two is low. That's going to make the uh, motor spin forward at full speed. But if we pulsate in one with PWM, we can control the speed in the forward direction. And then in the last is in one, in two. It's both high. That puts on the brake. So the motor is spinning. It's actually gener generating a voltage. And in one, in two will sh put a short across the motor. And we'll get some dynamic braking. And that will, that will slow down the that will slow down the motor. And we use brake when we go from reverse to forward or forward to reverse. So now we can control our motor using a microcontroller using the PWM channels in the microcontroller. Now you could use an RC transmitter and receiver for robotic applications for remote control. And the easiest way to do that is to get a motor driver board from Sabertooth. Now Sabertooth has a dual channel. It will run two wheels 
and has an RC interface. So the motor driver board actually plugs into the receiver. Now it will send the proper PWM to the motors for speed and for steering. So it's pretty well a turnkey system. Now by using a microcontroller, we can build a system similar to the Sabertooth controller. Now every channel on this RC controller sends out a number between 1000 and 2000 depending on its position. So right now this channel here is sending at 1000. If I bring it to the very top that would be 2000. If I bring it halfway that would be 1500. And back down to the beginning that would be 1000. This pot all the way to the left would be 1000 and all the way to the right clockwise would be 2000. And this three position switch this would be 1000, 1500, 2000. So this is a 10 channel transmitter so it will be 10 numbers corresponding to the position of each channel will be sent to the receiver. Now the output of the receiver is serial, this is white wire, it's IBUS, so those 10 numbers corresponding to the position of all the channels will be sent down this white wire into the microcontroller. Now the microcontroller will know the position of all the controls on the transmitter and it will send out the appropriate logic and PWM to the motor controller to control the speed the direction, forward or reverse, or and steering. So I have the white wire, which is the iBus link, connected up to the UART of the PIC microcontroller on my SCAMP3 board. And we could decode channel 3, which is this uh, joystick here. So if I move the joystick, I have it sent to the 16 LEDs on the SCAMP3 board. And it's pretty responsive. So I could decode any channel and feed it to the 16 LEDs. So next I'll decode this pot here. Okay, I'm running some code that will decode channel 5 which is this pot here so if I turn the pot all the way from minimum to maximum you can watch the LEDs on the SCAMP3 board so we could decode any of the channels any channel from 1 to 6 and we could get the values and we could use that in a custom remote control application okay since we have a microcontroller we could use it to control some servo motors so I'm using this control board here now this board can control up to 16 servos you can see channel 0 to 15 and there's our input so it uses the I squared C bus so only two wires for my microcontroller and VCC is 5 volts or 3.3 volts and then we have 5 volts just to power the servo motors it goes into this terminal strip here so it's very simple just with two wires we hook it up and we can control 16 servos and I have two servos right here connected up to the board and I'll run it, I'll run a program so I have it on channel 0 and channel 15. So the code that I'm running is very simple fourth code. I call it my KISS method. Keep it simple. So here's the code. 0 is the channel. 90 is the degrees. 2 servo. And it'll, it'll set the servo on channel 0 to 90 degrees. Or 15 would be channel 15. 180 would be 180 degrees. 2 servo. So it's very simple code. And every time I use this simple code, I get a lot of comments that it's clickbait, but it's not because it's working. It's running these two servo motors. Very simple when you use a microcontroller. Okay, so that was my little primer to get you started on your robotic projects. Now, if you're really serious about robotics, there's an online store called Robot Shop, and they have everything you need. They have the Sabertooth motor controllers. They even have this motor, this power window motor with the coupler and the wheel as one part. So check out Robot Shop for your one-stop shopping.